starting to flood in. So you know what, we're just going to go ahead and get going because we have a uh, pretty magnificent panel today and I want to make sure we take advantage of every moment as we close the summit strong here. So first and foremost, we're, I'm going to go ahead and quickly introduce everybody. Um, to kick it off, we have uh, the CEO of probably the most uh, important Mac hardware company uh, that there is at the moment, uh, Larry O'Connor. They make everything that connects to your Mac. And if there is one person who knows more about the hardware side around all the things Apple has just released, it is Larry O'Connor. Larry, uh, if there's one thing that you want to kick us off with around what you'd like uh, the OWC customer to understand around the new Apple hardware announcements, what would it be? You, the, the biggest thing is really about what it means, what Thunderbolt means for everybody who doesn't have the new M1 Mac, and it's that Thunderbolt is still Thunderbolt. Okay, so basically to sum that up, and I'll probably try and do this with everybody fairly quickly, what that means is uh, everything you've known about Thunderbolt is essentially the same, but uh, it's a little bit better, right? And how does the, is there anything that we should know in terms of how and, and there's some PC stuff that we probably can connect to as well. But is there anything that we should know with the new M1 computers and Thunderbolt 4 that the average person should understand? You need to know that Thunderbolt on the new M1, you know, in terms of Thunderbolt, this, we're just talking about what Thunderbolt is there to provide, the Thunderbolt capabilities. They have not changed. There's a little bit difference with, UPS, uh, with the USB, rather, in terms of how it's routed. But in terms of functionality and what it means for a user and the devices you can use, Nothing has changed. And with 11 dot, uh, with, with Mac OS Big Sur OS 11 running on Intel Macs, you get the same capabilities that you get on the M1 Mac in terms of th nothing's changed. You get the hubbing. The only thing that Thunderbolt 4 defined peripherally is a, is a peripheral, and it didn't have to, you know, was the hubbing technology. And we called our hub a Thunderbolt hub. We didn't even, even want to put Thunderbolt 4 in the name. And, and the reason we didn't put 4 in the name is because it really isn't Thunderbolt 4. On the PC, and I don't want to take a whole lot of time on this, you've got such a challenge. In fact, one of my neighbors, they got a Flex 8 and was helping them out because PCs with Thunderbolt 3 are, they can, they can be a nightmare. It depends what implementation you have, what hardware revision. You don't always have everything that Thunderbolt has to offer. Apple has always, since the very first 2016 Macs with Thunderbolt 3, done the full and proper Thunderbolt implementation. PCs, it's all over the place. It's even to the point where, or was to the point, not even to the point, it was normal for a PC to say, is Thunderbolt 3 ready? What did that mean? You had to put a card inside of it. And it's it just, uh, it's, it's a mess. Thunderbolt 4 was what Intel had to do in their minds from a marketing point of view to fix the big mess that was out there of what of what the user could expect because user experience on a pc with thunderbolt 3 you know really it could vary you could have the full implementation which was great or you could have things that were half implemented didn't support power delivery correctly didn't support devices that had power delivery it was it was a mess and thunderbolt 4 for a pc user means you have everything that thunderbolt 3 has always offered on the mac implemented standard in there Plus they rolled USB 4 into it. And from a marketing point of view, they also rolled into it a requirement that that PC be able to support 8K video. Thunderbolt believe, since Titan Ridge supports 8K. And there's one other thing too, I think, uh, because you guys just put out the first Thunderbolt 4 dock, correct? Our dock, did we release, did we announce our dock yet? I don't know that we had, that we officially announced our dock. Nope, it came out. I think there was something there was- it, the, Yeah. It's oh, you know, all right, never mind. I'm sorry. It's, it was, it, this has been an awesome, crazy week. So um, our doc is look, we, look, there's our hands have been they, they, our hands have been tied, our vocal cords, you know, disabled to talk about things we've wanted to talk about for weeks. But yeah, um, so our Thunderbolt doc has a built-in hub in addition to just being a hub. So it's a it's a dock with additional ports plus the hub. And I do want to say this: you will not see a Thunderbolt 4 storage device from us anytime soon because the Thunderbolt 4 chipsets, the, the Ghost and Ridge, and it's called Thunderbolt 3, I don't care what you want to call it, Ghost and Ridge was provided as a, adds additional feature opportunities for external devices, the primary feature being hubbing. It supports Thunderbolt switching so we can give you more Thunderbolt ports. It does not, because of its core design, it's not designed to support storage and other high performance engagements. 
it uses it uses effectively three fourths of the of the lanes that are available. It reserves those so it can provide the additional ports. Every port on the hub, every Thunderbolt port on the dock is a full 40 gigabit port. And Goshen Ridge is designed to provide it. It couldn't do that and also give us 40 gigabits for say a storage array or a PCI chassis or other things. Goshen oh. Ridge is designed to give us, effectively give us those additional hub ports. Now so I promise we're gonna to get to everyone else in one second, but there's one additional clarification too I wanna to make sure that we do before we jump off the, the dock, which is uh, one of the interesting things about Thunderbolt 4 is it is, it is an end to daisy chaining, correct? What do you mean is an end to daisy chaining? So there's multiple, you could now, you don't have to go, there's not the two Thunderbolt ports that you connect to. There's, you can put multiple Thunderbolt ports on the same hub, right? So you can go in correct. a row, correct? Do you correct. want to explain it, that for a second? But it's, but it's not the end of daisy chaining. It just now you have, you can have more bus powered devices. You can rearrange your workflows or this just say the, or the devices, how you have them connected. So it's more convenient to disconnect something that's, that you want to be able to take in and out of the chain. You know, or maybe there is less daisy chaining because you can now put more ports on the device directly versus what you used to be able to do. Yeah, you're no longer forced to daisy chain everything. You, you can add more ports. You can go straight into the ports or you'd be closer to the computer. And you can put a, you know, you can have, you, you're not limited to just one hub either. You can add multiple hubs to a computer, you know, if you have that many devices. And you get, of course, the best performance you get is always as close as possible to the computer. So eliminating daisy chaining, better stability of the, the you get better device stability, convenience, you can do better workflows, and you get better performance from those higher performance devices as well when they're not stuck at the end of a chain. Cool. Well, moving along, because now the question is going to be, what are editors going to do with all of the functionality that comes from the new Thunderbolt 4 Max, uh, which are also now going to be, which apparently it's already already been Thunderbolt 4, but there's going to be increased functionality with the well, M1 chip. Thunderbolt 4 Max. Apple's not using the Thunderbolt 4 uh, namesake. They're, the Apple called, in fact, if you look at the specs in the M1s, it's Thunderbolt slash USB 4 is what they're calling the ports. And if you look at the specs, they actually say you get X number of Thunderbolt 3 ports that also will do USB 3.1 Gen 2. So basically, what, Thunderbolt 4 is really a marketing <laughs> term. If you're on the PC side, it's kind of marketing. It means one, you have everything that Thunderbolt 3 has already been present for on prior generation Macs. And depending upon the PC on, on a lot of PCs as well. But now it's got to be there. It can't be optional. It can't be half implemented. It's got to be there. And number two, it also means on a PC that you have USB 4, fine, whatever, and that you have a computer that can do 8K display. You can't apparently be, and this is my understanding, you can't be Thunderbolt 4 labeled on the PC and not be able to have an 8K display plug into it and go. Now, what we support on the Mac, you know, for, in terms of 8K video, Titan Ridge, since Titan Ridge in 2018, we have had support through Thunderbolt, through Thunderbolt 3, to handle 8K displays. Thunderbolt 4 doesn't change that. Again, if I'm a PC person, I, all Thunderbolt 4 is really doing is providing a definition of what is absolutely going to be present in that computer. And if I'm a Mac user and I look at that, the only thing that's really absolutely saying about Thunderbolt is, well, I've already had all these things. And if it's a Thunderbolt 4 PC, I don't have to go look at the fine print to know that everything I have on my Mac is there on that PC. And that's even a Mac from 2016. Well, I think that's an important distinction. And I think, you know, the next person up who I want to kind of introduce is Jeff Greenberg, who basically goes between uh, the worlds as the, uh, you're like kind of the Rosetta Stone of uh, video editors and uh, a master trainer for FMC. Jeff, with all of the Apple hardware announcements, what would you say about the app, Apple ecosystem between the M1, uh, Thunderbolt, whatever we're going to call it, USB 4, all of those things, and uh, the new iPhones and the overall hardware ecosystem that is clearly evolving to get streamlined across all of the devices. What do you have to say about it? Um, I, I think it's uh, a very exciting time to be a Mac user, to be honest. Uh, it's they're, they're really pushing the envelope uh, and make, putting a lot of pressure on the other companies. All I can tell you is I'm going to end up needing more storage, faster connectivity across the board. I shot with the uh, iPhone Pro, iPhone Max Pro, iPhone 12 Pro, whatever it is. I shot for an hour. Dolby footage, HDR, it's about seven gigabytes. Okay. We're now talking that it's not the most uncommon thing 
for somebody to whip out a 10-bit camera in their pocket, shoot HDR. I want to go back and now I got to get it from point A to point B if I'm going to do anything with it. Apple is doing the right thing. They're pushing, you know, the only question I have, Sam, is are they going to take the headphone jack off? <laughs> well, you know, they're angling for it. They've got to. I mean, that they're, they're, it's it's going to happen. It's all going to be it's all going to be wireless at some point. I mean, I think. But uh, they're desperate. They, they want to remove ports. They've shown that over the years. So I, I would guess it's, it's numbered. Um, and uh, I think for the Final Cut user, basically, we have the person who runs the most widely read Final Cut site on the Internet, Peter Wiggins of FCP.co. Uh, Peter, um, you also Industrial Revolution for plugins as well. Peter, what do you have to say about the new version of Final Cut and what's important about all of the things that we've seen over the, uh, the summit the last few days? I think it's all really important. And I think the 10.5 update is a huge update. I mean, there's people saying, people there, there are people disappointed with the update, but I think, I think it's one of the biggest updates they've done because it runs on the new silicon. And um, I think there's gonna be a huge uptake of the machines. Um, they say there's gonna be a two year transfer over, but I think they're gonna sell, sell thousands upon thousands upon thousands of the new Apple Silicon machines. Well, Peter, um, what are you uh, talking to us from at the moment? I am talking to you from an M1 powered 13 inch MacBook Pro, 16 gig of RAM, two terabytes um, that got delivered this afternoon. Bit of panic this afternoon because uh, or tonight, because I thought, yeah, I'll just go on here with the new machine. Realize I hadn't got Zoom installed. So it's kind of like, you know, the quick, uh, quick download it. And all I, you know, Larry was exactly right. What I did was I unplugged my old one, which is an Intel 13 inch and just did a cable swap into the two um, Thunderbolt connections on the side. Monitor pops up, you know, keyboard works, everything. Um, you know, it, it's, they've been really clever taking the same form factor and everything to make the machines. I, I think there'll be people walking into Apple stores who will buy these machines without realizing that it's got a new, the new chip in it because everything just works. You know? It's almost as if they've changed something under the hood and people know about it and will get the speed benefits. But if you don't know about it, it doesn't matter. You know, they're, they're, it, it's, not a, it's not a problem. But I do think, I do think the 10.5 update is huge. I mean, I've had, I haven't had this long. Um, when you open Final Cut up uh, for the second time, because the first time it installs the audio units, it doesn't even bounce in the dock. It just goes up and then you get the splash screen. And it's that quick. And when you open when you open up the MacBook Pro, it is on. You know, when you open it a millimeter, it's on, and you think you've left it on, yes? Because you think, oh, I've left it on. No, it's it, it goes on when you open it up, and it's you just have to get your head around. <coughs> excuse me, a few new things. Um, so last but not least, I want to make sure I introduce Jonathan Sims. Not many of you probably know who Jonathan Sims is, but if anyone watched the uh, Orphan Starfish keynote on Wednesday with. Uh, Andy Stein, uh, the first of the OWC media centers and, and the participant in the, in the lab that we just did in Acoma, New Mexico. Uh, Jonathan Sims is the instructor there. He's also happens to be a huge Final Cut geek. And uh, what's interesting and is probably the most inspiring story I've seen in a long time uh, is taking Acoma, New Mexico, the Pueblo in New Mexico from never having even being allowed, honestly, to shoot uh, film uh, on the premises there, if you are in the tribe, he is building the media program directly there. It's going to be the first of the OWC media centers we're going to launch. And Jonathan, I'm just curious, uh, how will it feel next year going from uh, basically not even being allowed to shoot to have it to having your kids shoot with their phones in HDR uh, from some of the new Mac hardware? What it, What is your imp impression of this? And can you give us a little background for what's going on there? Yeah, um, yeah. Good, uh, good afternoon, evening, everybody. And uh, no, thank you for that. Um, we're proud at Acoma to definitely be one of the first uh, OWC media centers. And uh, as Sam mentioned, um, we come from a um, a community where media is actually kind of a taboo subject still, which a lot of people wouldn't think um, even exist in today's media world, considering media is a twenty four seven. Uh, entity that uh, fulfills all of our lives, um, but in uh, in uh, my Pueblo community, uh, it became a uh, idea of um, saving um, our people's image and story, um, because my community comes uh, is a 
a community that has had a storied history in actual filmmaking coming in. Um, and, uh, you know, the term that I used in my workshop was, you know, we were always the backdrop, but never the film. And um, so now we have our kids telling our own stories and uh, we're telling our own stories in the midst of um, this pandemic and in the midst of uh, a lot of things happening in my small community. Um, and so what's happened is uh, we've literally given these kids um, a way to go out and document their community and uh, to document it from the inside out. Which is never, which has never been done, and um, and what's interestingly, what's interesting enough is that um, in the midst of this pandemic, and right now we are we're in, in my community, we're in the midst of our one hospital closing. Um, the nearest hospital for us is uh, about forty miles away. Um, our hospital um, fee uh, supports about seven thousand people, gets ninety thousand visits a year. Um, and it's about to close in the midst of a pandemic. And uh, so we're trying to um, um, keep uh, the pressure on and uh, us creating our media at this time is like a godsend because um, now uh, we have young people that I can, I right now, our Pueblo is closed, it's locked down. I can't enter my Pueblo even as a community member living outside. Uh, so those kids and the people that we've trained are now um, our people inside the Pueblo and making media for us. Um, I had a bunch of, I had a bunch of eleven-year-olds go out and shoot me media that went to the National Press Corps last week, you know, and uh, that is amazing. And the technology, um, I, you know, I was a, I'm a big uh, Mac geek, and uh, I haven't been this excited about something since like we moved to Intel processors, and so now this is like I can't, I can't wait. To um, to get a Mac Mini or a couple of Mac Minis, <laughs> uh, and um, you know uh, the potential is is enormous. And uh, for us right now, the ability to uh, create media, and even for uh, the kids, we're not necessarily they're not necessarily on laptops or even on desktops, but they're creating uh, full fledged media from the iPads and the iPhones, and that is amazing. So basically, we've got this whole ecosystem now being created where, in many cases, you've got iOS devices as the cameras, and you might even begin editing in some capacity or storing your media on the iOS devices that is then going to probably get passed to your primary edit editor on the Mac or on probably an M1 laptop. And you can even now open up things like LumaFusion on the Mac. So you might even be able to open your LumaFusion projects and bring those directly into Final Cut directly on the Mac, really from the same Mac. And so the, the possibilities and where all of this is going seems to be endless, but I'm curious for you guys, where do you guys see this content creation ecosystem on the Apple platform going in the big picture? I'll let anybody take that. You, I can call them. I think, you guys. I think can you froze on the can end. You, can you, re can you repeat that last like, oh, sentence, Sam? I froze. So where do we all see the Apple content ecosystem going in the big picture? What's important think, about this? How I, are people going to be making content? How is this all going to connect together? I think, I think two things are going to be really important. First, um, with this idea of 10-bit HDR phones, we're going to have serious, great-looking pictures from inside, from out of your pocket. It's going to just become the camera. It's it's the old adage, the best camera is the one you have on you. And now suddenly the camera we have on us is significantly, I think, in order for me, when I talk, you know, when I put in my colorist brain, I go, look, the one thing I want you to do is 10 bit. If, if nothing else, if I can get you to 10 bit, I can at least salvage a lot more. So suddenly now everybody in their pocket's going to have this. And then the other thing that goes with it is and at least, Larry, tell me if I'm getting it right. It sounds like a lot of the confusion cross-platform of plugging in peripherals is kind of going to go away as long as you're buying, you know, new tools, they'll plug and go. Am I right there? Did I freeze? I would say yes to that. I, I think so, especially if you buy Thunderbolt. I mean, it's you know, the experience, whether it's a, for the most part, whether it's a Mac or if it's a PC with Thunderbolt 4 or any Mac that's got Thunderbolt 3 or 
or Thunderbolt USB, however Apple wants to do a turbine, if it's just going to work. Well, can we clarify this too? Because I know there's USB 4 and USB C and some of that stuff. Is there any difference to any of this stuff? Is there anything we need to know? Well, let's just let's, let's make a separation. And this is where, I mean, it just got unnecessarily confusing because USB C is really not an interface, it's a port type. So USB C is what the port's called. And USB C ports, you know, can support anything from just USB. 5G, like the first MacBook got 12 inch, had USB 5G on it with Type-C, all the way up to, well, Thunderbolt 3 and 40 gigabits. But it's a USB-C port, that's the, 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 the actual physical port name, and it doesn't, but it's not necessarily, uh, that, that's not the interface. Now, if it's any, every Type-C port on every computer I've ever seen, it doesn't matter if it's Thunderbolt or not, it supports some form of USB, but it's, that's what the port's called, USB 3.1 and 3.2 and USB 4. Those were the interfaces called Thunderbolt you know, interface, and those all use Type C ports. But so, USB, by the way, 3.2 and 4.0 also work with Type A ports. I mean, it's it's just such a it's you almost don't need, I'd rather not even think about it. USB 4. There are no peripherals for USB 4. And what's worse, by the way, just to really put this out there, there are USB 4 cables on the market right now today. You know, companies have jumped the gun, and they do not have correct firmware. On their little on their chips on their identifiers and they're going to create problems for people when they try to use those cables in the future if you buy a thunderbolt 4 cable that's a, you know thunderbolt is just thunderbolt for the by and large is, is awesome it's just thunderbolt if it's type seen as thunderbolt you know plug in any computer that's got thunderbolt well certainly any mac pcs again some different some little challenges here and there but if it's a thunderbolt 4 cable it'll also work with any type c device usb is is usb is a real pain point for, I mean, just the inconsistencies and experience and surprises when you plug something in, it doesn't work. But Thunderbolt is a Thunderbolt product between the current Macs and the previous Macs with Thunderbolt 3 and the new PCs with Thunderbolt 4. Everything's going to interchange very nicely. And Thunderbolt 4 cables, it doesn't matter if you're plugging that between, you know, a MacBook and a USB-C drive or your power adapter in your computer or full-on Thunderbolt devices. A Thunderbolt 4 cable, which is always C to C, and it will say Thunderbolt 4 on it, have a four, a big 4 on it, that lightning bolt, they're pricey 40 gigabits. Whatever you plug it into, if there's site type C ports at both ends, it will always work at maximum speed that the host and the device together support. You will never have to worry about having the wrong cable. All right. Well, Jeff's got a question. I, it's not a question. I just, you know, almost want to point out I'm listening to you, Larry talk about USB 3 and Thunderbolt 4 and, you know, to the consumer, to the creative, they're going to go in and whether it's an iPhone or another tool, they're going to plug in and just, it sounds like a lot of the problems and confusions are going to be dissipating over the next, at least certainly in the Apple ecosphere and in theory in the PC ecosphere of the next 48 or so months, we're going to have a lot less pain in being content creators. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, there is one nice thing about the Goshen Ridge and the, and the new, well, again, I, they didn't have to call it Thunderbolt 4, you know, on the peripheral side, but let's just go with it because they called it Thunderbolt 4. You know, our Thunderbolt, our Thunderbolt hub, which is uses a, a Thunderbolt 4 chipset. The nice thing, the one nice thing about those products is that they support compatibility mode. There is a requirement that's not optional. Titan Ridge, you could or you couldn't do it. You had compromises on Thunderbolt. If you did, if you did USB, if you supported USB-C computers or hosts with Goshen Ridge, you have no compromise. You get full performance on a USB-C computer or a, a Thunderbolt computer. So if you plug our hub into a, an iPad Pro, you, you don't get Thunderbolt because the iPad Pro does support Thunderbolt, but all the ports will work as USB Type-C and the USB port will function as well. Our hub, same thing, all the hub ports I'm sorry, our dock, all the dock ports will function. And the, but the, instead of being Thunderbolt ports on those type C's, they end up being USB uh, ports. But you can't plug, the one thing you still can't do is plug a Thunderbolt device into a type C computer. Thunderbolt, any, I should say, a storage device that's, that's truly Thunderbolt. But going forward, as, you know, and this is probably uh, next year, the year after, when we do see migration from Thunderbolt uh, three chipsets and start seeing chipsets for peripherals that are designed for storage you will have that same interoperability. Their work is USB when, USB mode when you plug them into a USB device. They're working Thunderbolt mode when you have Thunderbolt available. So that's, 
that stuff is co coming too, but I will caution Thunderbolt, uh, the Thunderbolt hub technology, everything that's coming out now as we move forward that has this dual mode compatibility, like, like our hub, like our dock that they've called the Ghost and Rich Thunderbolt 4. It on the Mac side, you will have to be running Mac OS 11 Big Sur to use those capabilities. If you're running an older OS, the stuff just doesn't show up. And I want to put one other thing out there, and I was kind of trying to answer the question. Somebody asked a question about older machines with like Thunderbolt 2, can they use the hub? The answer is sort of. I would prefer just to say no, but if you use, if you have an Apple Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter and you connect our Thunderbolt 4 hub or our Thunderbolt 4 equipped dock, it will operate, but you only end up with one functional downstream Thunderbolt port, just like a normal Thunderbolt 3 device or any Thunderbolt device up to this point. The other Thunderbolt, I'm sorry, yeah, the other Thunderbolt, the additional ports that it would normally add to a Thunderbolt 3 machine or an M1 Mac are reduced to just USB-C at 10 gigabit. So it'll work, but you you don't get, it doesn't like, you don't get to add more ports to a Thunderbolt 2 machine with, with an adapter. It's actually really impressive. I mean, we're going back, come on. I mean, it, you gotta buy a brand new PC to know you're gonna get, you know, the ability to support more ports, add more ports to a PC. You gotta buy a Thunderbolt 4 PC. Us Mac users, you know, the machine you bought in 2016 can use this hub and add more ports. So they didn't, they weren't able to go back before 2016, but you know, Thunderbolt 2, but nonetheless, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy about what Apple did here. Okay, so what I want to do, because uh, I don't know how much more time we have, is I think I want to go ahead and run the giveaway now. Uh, we've got a lot of people out there. We've got an Envoy Pro Mini to give away. Can we uh, flash the slide real quick? And uh, do we want to figure out how to pick a winner here? So just so you guys know, the Envoy Pro Mini is basically like an SSD and a thumb drive. And it is about the fastest way to edit with a thumb drive that you will ever find. It's an awesome drive that OWC makes. This is, if you guys don't know about it, it is a huge a uh, problem solver for anyone who's ever had to do on the go editing uh, and just needs a little lightweight, lightweight drive to bring with them. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, can we go ahead and pick a winner? I think yes. we already have. So the winner is Art Aldrich. We can, I can unmute Art. Congratulations, now. Art. Maybe you can do lots of talk. And That's welcome, awesome. Art. And uh, do we, uh, how much more time do we have? I think we're, we're pretty much up against it, aren't we? Are we over? We are, it's, it's, it's okay. We're, um, you know, we'll, we'll take the extra minute, Sam, uh, because I think it's important for those of you, this is the least we've ever seen from you at a, a Creative Summit, Sam. You, you were, the story of, of, we were in LA, we were debating between, do we do it in LA or Cupertino? back when you were just an editor, Sam, when you were just an editor, not everything you are and more today. Um, so I always have got to thank you uh, for everything you've, you've done. Uh, Peter uh, it also goes without saying, uh, fcp.co, you've been an inspiration over these years as far as Final Cut goes. Jonathan, it was a joy to meet you this year and have you speak here and Larry, um, all I wanted you to do is produce more stuff faster, please, because the hardware you're making <laughs> really links together uh, everybody and the clients and everywhere I go. Uh, I would have shown, if we had more time, I would have actually shown you there's a dock there and there's an obscene amount of Thunderbolt on the machine behind me uh, that have plugs spiraling out. And I can't wait for this thing to, to come out in the market. When is it gonna be on the market? It, it's pretty much right now. Okay, so I'm going to Amazon in between, uh, just so everybody knows. Well, don't about necessarily 10 go to gym. Amazon. You might want to go someplace else. Larry, you have anything to say about that? Yeah. yeah. If you want the help or the doc right now, you got to go to our site. Once there's a good supply and we catch up, it'll, it'll, it'll be on Amazon probably in three or four weeks. Okay. So we're going to OWC computing then. Um, in the meantime, in the meantime, just 